I grew up in the north. This is just another northern day. I think this hunt is going to be a, a big challenge, both for my dad and myself, just in different ways. He's right near the top of that dome. That's a big, big bear. We just saw the biggest bear that any of us have ever seen in the Yukon. Good sight. Good one. We should get on the move. Let's go. Today's the day. I did come to harvest a sheep, and I'm still locked into that. That's my mindset. You know when you're walking, you don't have time to look around, but look at this amazing. Those are the moments when you do stop, take a look around and just enjoy it, right? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm grateful for being here. So am I. Okay, shall we carry on? Son? Let's go. Let's go. He's not allowed to stop. Hey, you just stop. I wonder if I should tell him he's not allowed to stop. What do you think his reply to me will be? I don't know whether you noticed or not, but uh, Greg is ahead of me and sometimes well ahead of me. And then he'll stop and he'll, he'll rest. He'll rest. And I have to catch up and he says, good one, Dad, keep going. <laughs> so I don't get to take the rest. This is all uphill. And going through that snow is a test, a real test. But we got through it, there's still more. I can't imagine what they go through on Everest and mountains like that. I mean, for me, this is my Everest, I guess. But uh, it's nothing compared to what those guys go through. So, again, keep moving. And our team love to get out and accomplish the goals and do it in our style. But, but this is really what it's about. It's about getting out with my dad and watching him push himself. And just try to be part of it and help him along. And experience it together. And you see a fella in his mid-70s out here hunting sheep in October in winter conditions. That says something. Whether we harvest a ram or not, this is ultimately what it's about. Just watching him is, in a lot of ways, is inspirational because I'm coming up this hill and thinking, man, when I'm 74, am I still gonna be running around the mountains hunting sheep? I hope so. This guy's doing it. There's no hope. Hope is not a plan. I better go catch up to him. Dead calm. Every noise we make is absolutely critical. So we gotta take our time, take it easy. My shoulders just hurt to be broken. There's only one thing I'm not gonna do. What's that? You know what that carry is. Me. That, there's two things I'm not gonna do. One is carry you. <laughs> the other one is carry your gun. No, I don't expect you to carry my gun. Can, can it's the family run? rule, right? Right on. I can't tell where it is. I believe we have to get to the top of that and they're over the other side. Let's go. see your footing and you're dealing with slippery rocks and you're playing catch up all the time with these guys, that's killing me. <laughs> no, I don't mind saying like, this is the most difficult hunt that I've been on. I don't see them any, like as we continue down, like I mean they can pop up over top of this. starting to narrow down where they were. But it's really difficult. Everything is just looks all the same. 
I gotta stay super close to him, it's hard. But these sheep could just walk right up and head up and see us. Unfortunately, again, like last year, we're gonna be right on top of them. It's not what I wanted. Worst case scenario, this happened. We were just out of sight for so long that we we didn't know where they were. We just spooked them. The young one was looking right at me and saw it in my head. I saw them all group up about 100 yards away, and then we just turned and walked away. I think the odds of us catching up to them are pretty slim. Is that it? It's not even close to it. <laughs> we have tracks. I don't know. You tell me. You're gonna have to help me with this pack. I'll take everything in it. I can't carry it on my front and focus. So I'm taking my dad's coat, putting it in my pack, and a 16-foot tape measure falls out. You never know when you're gonna need a 16-foot tape measure. Sheep hunting. It makes sense. Totally. Totally makes sense. I don't know if complaining about it. I could have brought a 12 foot, but I brought a 16 just in case we get a big ram. You never know. It's a big ram, apparently. I don't know how it got in my bag, obviously. Just an, an extra weight, another anchor in my pocket. That's one of the big factors that's really hard on us, as far as having the ability to spot a sheep and go after it with the amount of daylight. You know, it's tough for the three of us to do it, let alone you know, dad, so it's a little bit more challenging when your speed is, has to be such a huge factor with the waiting days. The rams are clearly running big distance between their feet and their toes are spread out. Not good. Just trying to follow their tracks, but we only have a couple hours of daylight left. He's hurting bad, so I don't know how much more mountain time he's got in him. That's not I don't know that we can make it happen. We were on on the sheep, but we spooked them, I guess, and they're gone up over the ridge and do about 90 mile an hour, I guess. What they can do in two minutes <laughs> can literally take us an hour. But uh, we're losing light, and we have no choice but to keep moving. And we're a long, long ways from camp. So smile and suck it up and keep rolling, right? They didn't come up through this saddle. Not where I've seen anyways, but I think that they wrapped around and we probably should have seen them on that side and didn't. We gotta keep moving. It's gonna be dark when we get back. Dark, dark, like real, real dark. Like pitch black dark. Almost there, Tex. Hey, you got her. Can you carry me the rest of the way, son? Nope. <laughs> You're carrying everything else for me. So you still have your binos and you still have your goggles. I'll carry your goggles. Here we go fishing. <laughs> Holy crap. It is a workout. And we will see what tomorrow holds.